Hey team, we're going to learn how to automatically lint our code and even fix it with ESLint and Next.js. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you hit subscribe for future updates. If this is your first time hearing of linting, it's the process of running static analysis on your code to find bugs and even style issues. The most popular one in the JavaScript world is ESLint, where along with installing it as an NPM module, you can run it as a command line tool or even as part of your processing workflow, where it's going to run all of the scanning right on all your code that you pass in as your target. Now you might already be familiar with Next.js, but it's a React framework where it gives a lot of tools on top of React right out of the box that helps us build amazing web apps. The cool thing is they recently released Next.js 11, which includes a bunch of things, including something called Conformance, which is a program that they've been working with the Google Web Platforms team, which includes a ton of great things with ESLint included, where now linting is built right into Next.js. Now this Conformance model from the Google team is a way for them to help web frameworks like Next.js or others where they can build in these experiences right into the framework so that developers don't even need to think about having these things out of the box, where we can run things like linting, but as well as have safeguards for things like accessibility and security and performance where we can really help develop a better place for the web. Now, as great as linting built right into Next.js is, the only downside is it really only runs it on build or production builds, where this is only going to shout if you're running that locally or if you're pushing this out to a CI CD environment and you end up getting a failed build because you have some linting errors. Now, that's not to say that you can always run next lint right inside of your project locally, but you also have to remember to do that. So we're gonna also learn how to automate this. And to do that, we're going to use the tool Husky, which is an easy way for us to manage Git hooks so that we can set it up so that these linting rules are ran any time that we try to commit. And because ESLint actually is able to fix some of these problems out of the box, not only are we going to automate linting, we're also going to automate fixing some of these problems so that we don't have to think about it at all when we're committing our code. So to do this, we're going to get started using create next app to create a new Next.js application. So inside my terminal, I'm going to run yarn create next app, and I'm going to pass in a new name for that project. I'm going to call it my ESLint next.js. And once you run that command, it's going to go ahead and clone down a new template, and it's also going to install a dependency. So now we can run CD my ESLint next.js. We can even run yarn dev, which is going to start at the development server. And if we load that up inside of our browser, we can see that we're going to get a new next.js application right out of the box. So while we're not actually really going to do much development of the application itself, it's a good way for us to be able to start testing things and see what it looks like when we're trying to lint our code that makes this project. Now, as we saw inside of the Next.js documentation, ESLint comes out of the box with Next.js. We can see that inside of our dev dependencies where we have ESLint and we even have a Next config for ESLint, but we can see under scripts, we have this lint script, which runs next lint. If we try running this inside of our terminal as is before we make any changes, we can see that it will go through, it'll run next lint, but we currently don't have any ESLint warnings or errors. And that's because everything coming out of the box with Next.js is compliant. Now to test this out, let's open up the pages index.js file, and we're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom where we're going to look at the image tag. Now, one of the ways that Next.js uses linting is for accessibility concerns. And one thing that's very important for accessibility is including an alt tag on all images. Now, we don't wanna actually commit a change with no alt tag, but let's see what happens if we remove this alt tag and we go back over to our terminal and we run yarn lint. And we can see just like before, it's going to run next lint, but this time as it goes through, we actually see this warning where it says image elements must have an alt prop. While this is just a warning, alternatively, there might be errors with ESLint, we can see that we're getting this rule that's getting fired because we never included an alt tag. And that's gonna say that it's warning us that we wanna be able to add an alt prop to all images to make sure we're trying to do as much as we can for accessibility. But now as expected, if I add that back in and I try running it one more time, we can see that it's going to go through. And because that alt tag is back there, we're gonna get no ESLint warnings or errors. Now, as we mentioned, we have this ESLint config next.js, where if we head over to this file in the root of the project .eslintrc, 
we can see that this is the ESLint config that Next.js comes with out of the box, where it's extending this Next config that Next.js maintains for the framework, but also we see this Next Core Web Vitals, which includes additional rules that correspond to the Web Vitals that come from the Google team. But because we have this configuration file, this means that we can actually configure this file to our liking and add rules and even ignore rules that we might not like. To test this out, I'm going to add a new rule that's going to add an error anytime that we have variables defined in our project that are currently not being used. To do that inside of my ESLint RC file, I'm going to add a new rules section where I'm going to do just that, define no unused variables, and I'm going to say I want it to error. Now alternatively, I can say that I want it to warn, but we're going to leave it as an error to see what that looks like. Back inside of my home page, I'm going to simply add constant test equals true. And we're going to just make sure that we don't use this anywhere inside of our project. But now if I go back to my terminal and I run yarn lint, again, it's going to run next lint. But as we can see, once it finishes, we're going to actually get an error this time where it says test is assigned a value but never used. And it's attributing that to the no unused variables rule, which we just added inside of our config. Now this can be really handy for keeping your code clean and making sure that you don't have anything to find that could be confusing for somebody that might be coming in, see this variable, not see it being used, and don't want to remove it because they're not sure if it's doing something that they're not sure of. But we can also remove this variable and if we go back to our config, we're going to run ESLint again just like before using yarn lint and it's going to go through and it's going to find no errors. Now so far this is working really great. But as we saw, we have to run that linting command anytime we want to see this happen, or we need to actually build the project. But like I mentioned before, instead, we're going to make that automatically happen using Git hooks, particularly with Husky, where we can install Husky right inside of our project and have it automatically work. So first, I'm going to take this Husky package, and I'm going to yarn add Husky right inside of my project, and just like any other package it's going to install into my project. Now the next thing that Husky tells us to do is it wants us to run this script called prepare inside of our project. And what's going to happen is anytime we define this prepare script inside of npm via our package.json, anytime somebody tries to install the packages, it's going to run Husky install so that it's setting up the local environment or any environment that's loading our, our different packages so that it can make sure that Husky is working the same across all different environments. So we can just copy and paste this command, and this time, no matter if you're using yarn or npm, you want to use npm to run the set script command. So I'm going to head over to my terminal, and I'm going to run npm set script prepare, and it's going to show up inside of our package.json, where we now added that prepare script under scripts, and all it's doing is running husky install. Husky also says that it wants us to run this prepare script before we do anything else. So let's head back over to our terminal. And this time you can either use npm run or yarn, where I'm going to run yarn prepare. And it's going to run that Husky install. Now we're going to do this next step slightly differently. We're inside of the docs to add a hook. Husky says to run Husky add and where it says to add a pre-commit hook where it's going to pass it as npm test. But instead, what we're going to do is we're going to pass a generic value as that pre-commit hook. Particularly, we're going to create an npm script called pre-commit. So that way, anytime this pre-commit hook runs, it runs the pre-commit script, which we can easily modify and keep track of inside of our package.json file. Now we're still going to add a pre-commit hook, but let's do this slightly differently, where I'm going to run yarn husky, and I'm going to run add dot husky slash pre-commit so that we're still going to run an actual pre-commit hook, but this time I'm going to pass in the command that I want ran as yarn pre-commit. So what's actually going to happen is Husky is going to create this pre-commit hook, which we'll look at in a second, but because we want to manage our pre-commit hook inside of package.json, we're going to tell it that we're going to run this npm script via yarn pre-commit instead. If we look inside of our project, we can see we have this Husky directory, where inside we have this pre-commit file, where we can see right inside it runs that yarn pre-commit. Now the only thing left to do is define that pre-commit command, that script inside of our package.json. So I'm going to add a new line, and I'm going to run pre-commit as the script name, which we referenced inside of the Husky pre-commit script, and we're going to say we want it to run yarn lint, which is going to refer to our lint script, 
which is going to run next lint. Now I'm using yarn between this command here and as well as inside of my pre-commit hook because I'm running this package as yarn. But if you're running npm, make sure that this is npm run lint as well as the pre-commit, make sure that's npm run pre-commit. We can even test that this works in practice by running yarn pre-commit and we can see that it goes through, it runs yarn lint, which runs next lint, and we can see that we had no lint errors. Now the goal here still isn't to just run that command in the terminal, we want it to run anytime we commit, and we want to make sure that it's capturing those linting errors. So I'm going to add back in this constant test equals true, I'm going to head back over to my terminal, and let's try to actually commit something, where I'm going to say git add minus a, so we can make sure that we're adding those files, and I'm going to say git commit minus m, trying to add some linting configurations. And we can see that when it runs, it's going to run yarn lint. Because of that git husky hook, it's even going to run next lint. And we can see that we're getting this error where it's running the linting just like we saw before, where it's finding an error because of the assigned value but never used, but it's failing out of that commit process because we're running it as a pre-commit, which happens before the commit actually gets applied. And because it's failing out with that exit code, it's preventing us from committing, which is exactly what we want so that we can go in and fix that and make sure it's great before we actually commit it and send it up to the cloud. And just to be sure that it's still going to work once it's passing, we can remove that test equals true again. I'm going to add those changes. And this time I'm going to commit the same exact thing. And this time it's going to run the linting command. But as we can see, there's no lint warnings or errors. So this time it committed everything just perfectly fine. Now, as I mentioned before, ESLint is actually able to take in an additional flag where we can fix things automatically. The trick is not every single one of the rules available to ESLint is available for automatic fixing. Now, if we look through the rules document inside of the ESLint documentation, we can see that inside here, there's two different icons that represent different states, where we see this wrench icon that means it's able to be fixed. If we scroll down, we can see that a lot of the possible errors aren't actually fixable aside from a few of them, but as we scroll down, we can see things like best practices and even some stylistic issues are going to be able to be fixable for us. Now there are a lot of options that we can use here to show that this works, but I'm going to use indentation, which is a good one to show how this actually works, which is going to help us enforce indentation on our project. Now I know a lot of people have different opinions. Two spaces is better than tabs, just deal with it, but we're going to see what happens when we actually run this. Inside of my ESLint RC, I'm going to add that new rule where I'm going to say for the indent rule, I'm going to throw in an error but I'm gonna say that I want it to be two spaces. Now, just like anything else, because Next.js comes out of the box with two spaces of indentation, it's actually going to work completely fine as is. But if we head over to the project and we mess up some of these indentation, we can even see that VS Code is yelling at us with these red lines. But now if I try to run yarn lint again, we can see that it goes through, it runs the linting, and this time I get a bunch of errors because of that inconsistent spacing. Now, like I was saying, because Next.js supports ESLint, which supports the additional flag of fix, we can pass that fix flag right into that ESLint command where it's going to go through. And we can see it says there's no ESLint warnings or errors. And if you noticed in the background, we now have that consistent spacing. We didn't have to do anything in order to get that to automatically fix our code. So what we want to do, though, is we want to make it so that anytime we try to commit, Similar to running that error if we are breaking rules, we want to try to fix as much as we possibly can instead of having to manually do it ourselves. So back inside of my package.json, because of the way we set it up, we can manage that pre-commit hook inside of the package.json. So at the end of yarn lint, I'm going to tag on that fix. But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to run and git add minus a and all, so that's going to add any changes that get made from this fix. Again, I'm going to go back to all those broken changes and let's see what happens if we try to commit this. So like before, I'm gonna run git add minus a, git commit minus m, committing some auto fix. And this time when it runs, it's going to run yarn lint with the fix 
and it's going to automatically fix all of that stuff right inside of the pre-commit hook, which is a beautiful thing. It's also going to run git add minus a to add all those changes to the commit stage. And now we have that commit where our code is beautiful, optimized, and we're ready to go with our ESLint rules. Now, one thing I wanna point out with this command that I just added is particularly the git add minus a. Now we're not going to actually go into it inside of this tutorial, but you're probably better off using other tools in order to handle what's actually getting added after the lint fix happens. Particularly, I recommend checking out this package called lint stage, where what happens is anytime you run this, it's only going to run on the files that are actually changing as part of the commit. And that way, it'll additionally only pass in a string of the changed files into that linting command, as well as the adding those files back into the project so that you're not adding any random file that you have changed on your file system. It's only going to make those changes to the files that are actually trying to be committed in the first place. But now that we have linting set up, you can take some time to find any of the rules that you want to add, and you don't need to get this perfect the first time. The goal is really just to get something in there, and you can definitely change it as time goes along. Now, something also to consider as you're adding new rules is if you're making changes that are going to affect a lot of files and a lot of lines, you can run into an issue where you're making a lot of changes automatically fixed that's going to create a really messy commit for somebody to try to actually read. So if you're doing that, make sure that you're testing it on a test project before you do this or save your changes or try to maybe commit as a separate commit where you're actually adding all those formatting rules so that you and your team have an easier time getting through that for your project. But once you get to that point, you can also check out some of the published configurations that other teams work on where teams like Airbnb maintain their own ESLint config that you can plug in right inside of your project. Or if you're a Prettier fan and you want to run Prettier along with your project, you can use the ESLint config Prettier tool, which can plug in so that way you can run ESLint and Prettier right side by side so you're not running into any weird conflicts. Linting is one of the great code tasks that is really great for trying to maintain consistency and trying to avoid bugs in your project. But like other code tasks, it's one of those things that you have to run manually or wait until the CI CD process kicks off, which at that point, maybe it's too late or maybe it's going to lead to frustration if you don't have it applied ahead of time. But fortunately, we can use tools like git hooks and run the fix command where we have a way to do that automatically where we don't ever have to even think about it. What's your favorite ESLint rules or what's your favorite way to automate tasks like that? Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, if you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching.